Hey guys, finally I get to talk about my T-Max after doing a bunch of stuff on a helicopter. So, this is my only nitro car that I have because I sold my off nine, my MGT, and all the other stuff that I had just to, you know, just to thin down what I had because it was too much. And I was only going to use one anyway, so I thought I'd keep this one because this is my favorite. I did just get these Proline Big Joes 40 series for 35 bucks really cheap I appreciate it. thanks a lot for selling these to me for really cheap um the chrome I don't really like it but I mean it is what it is so you can't really change that yeah you can see how it says Big Joe 40 series yeah these are pro lines so these are really good I'm running this on a uh, radio link um, hold on let me turn it on and off for you again yeah, there you go. So it, it lights up, but you can see it has telemetry, so I'm kind of low on battery right now, 6.9 volts, because it's a 7.4 volt LiPo 2S. I have it set to my model T-Max, and what's really nice is you can see, like, it's super smooth, like, it has six channels, so you can see all these kind of stuff. I have all my trim set up correctly, so... Nice. You can see all these um, things moving, the sliders. And it also gives your RSSI, which is really nice. Um, yeah, RPM, you can't use it because that's mostly for electrics. The ESC provides the information, so it kind of sucks, but whatever. So, it's at 7.6 volts right now, so the transmitter is at 7.6, the, my car is at 6.6. And I mean, other than that, it's pretty normal. 2.4 gigahertz um, spread spectrum, six channel radio. So the channels I have are obviously steering um, on this one, and throttle and brake. No, it's I have this thing. So right now it's set to go to forward. If I flick it right in the middle, it goes to reverse. And if it goes into reverse, it just kind of stresses out the servo a little bit. So I don't really do that, but it's just forward or reverse. And then I have a servo engine kill switch that actually has a thing that stops um, the engine from getting fuel and it just kills the engine, so I use momentary switch. That's really nice. This thing has, this thing is really high end for like 80 bucks. Tons of different, um, it all gives you the necessary stuff like EPAs and stuff and point adjustment trims, sub-trims, all that kind of stuff, so that's really nice. $70 for this radio, it's really good. I just wish they did a little bit better on the quality of the plastic, but I mean, hey, it's 80 bucks. What do you expect? So, onto the car. I have the limited edition red and yellow and silver body on this thing. Um, pretty cool. I have a bunch of stickers on it, as usual. Body clips. Uh, take them off for you. So this is actually an XTM 457 big block engine. I don't know if you can see the lettering on there. XTM 457. It's upside down. 457. And yeah, this thing is impossible to find nowadays. That XTM chassis. It's the full metal one. I wish they made it a little bit stiffer because. I don't know if any of you have this problem, but when I press brake, you can see the, the chassis kind of moves a little bit, and then the transmission kind of like moves a little bit, and it kind of comes, um, it kind of loses its mesh with the gear. I don't know if you guys have this problem. Please let me know if you have any. You can see it kind of loses its mesh there. So I wish they made it a little bit thicker. This is three millimeter. Aluminum or steel, I guess. Yeah, it's aluminum. And yeah, I mean this thing is impossible to find nowadays because they stopped making these a long time ago. The XTM chassis. So yeah, this is extended, so it's a lot bigger than the normal T Max. Um, four five seven, four point five seven cc, three point eight horsepower. Pretty nice engine. I've probably like two gallons at most run through this because I actually got this used um so I had to replace the Polestar ones because it broke and I reround it 
but then it didn't it didn't perform as well as it did last time so i actually found out that xtm went out of business years ago and they were bought by sh so the sh 20 because this is a 28 engine you can see down there um sh the 28 pulsar works perfectly in this engine so um yeah it's a really good tip for you i could not find any like i i can't like i found the manual but if you look online you can find basically only pictures and there's none for sale and in in the months i've been searching for one used or whatever on ebay i've only seen one and i was the this is the xtm 457 pro i that one was a regular i think so yeah I've, i haven't seen these for sale anymore so once this runs out i'm probably gonna get a 179 dollar um lrp spec 4 or I don't I, I think it's a point thirty two engine, I forgot. It's something like five horsepower, so it's it's really recommended for T Max. And it's really cheap, so I mean it's one hundred and seventy nine dollars for an engine is really cheap, so I like that. It has servo kill switch so you just push the momentary and it just kinda of pinches the fuel line. Pretty simple. I was actually gonna three D print one but there was like the wire didn't have enough length, so I just kind of super glued it onto the fuel tank. I mean, it, it wasn't a lot of super glue. I can really always take it off really easily with force, but it just stays on there when I'm when I'm bashing it. So I mean, throttle and brake linkage is pretty pretty um, easy stuff. This this thing is really hard to do brakes on because it's either it's either really bad brakes or it's good brakes, but then. I mean, it has, so it either has really bad braking power or has good braking power, but it doesn't move freely when it's on the ground. So that's really annoying. So I spend maybe hours trying to set this up. So you have high voltage servos all around. This 35 kilogram. That's a Savox, and this is a 25 kilogram. So um, see, I am running a 7.2 volt lipo here. So I actually fried all of the stock servos on accident. So I had to get high voltage ones. Yes, I know you could get a BEC or something to step step it down to 6 volts, but I didn't know that at the time, so I kind of spent my... I actually wasted my money on Because these are like 50 bucks each, so... It's kind of kind of annoying. Anyways. What else? This thing is really loud with the, with the stock um, exhaust setup. It's really... I, I just like it. You kind of need earplugs. I, I'm worried I'm going to damage my hearing. I did have to, so I did 3D print a battery box for this, it's just normal, you just take this body clip off and then there's a kind of a wall that just slides up and you can access all this stuff. And it's kind of tight so I don't want to take it off right now. And I did have to take off the handle, from here there's like a metal rod thing that you just kind of hold. You know, I didn't really like it because it hurt my hand, but I mean, yeah, I just took it off because this, this um, thing was blocking it. So. I have fuel filter and air coupler thing, um, 3D printed, uh, fuel line binders, uh, TRX 3.3 air filter. These things, the engines on this, they, they're such, they're so, um, large that they just suck in so much air. That the, I've had problems of my engine not starting because the foam in here actually gets sucked in and it, it just clogs the engine basically. So, I've had to add like a, like a little, like, like, you know those mesh screens on your windows? Like, I, I cut a piece and then I just kind of super glue it on so it doesn't get sucked in because I've, I was like, I was spending hours trying to tune it and it just wouldn't start and then I took it off and I found the air filter like in this neck right here, so that's kind of annoying. Just replaced the clutch system, clutch shoes, uh, clutch belt, pinion gear, bearings, all that kind of stuff, so overall. The reason I have this thing um, is because I can easily take this off right here in case I need to prime it because this thing will get so hot that the fuel when I try to prime it it'll just get pushed back like with bubbles and stuff because it's sizzling hot in there. So what I do is just I take this off and then I just blow into it really hard and then it'll, it'll eventually cool this down and then I can prime it again. And I can also prime it this way too. but. 
the stock setup it's supposed to be mounted on that side right there so the the little coupler right here is on the inside so i can't reach it i've actually had times where my hand scraped by this um clutch which which flywheel and also i've had it burnt and i've had burns from either the clutch bell or the actual engine block so that was really annoying so that's why I took this off a of Hangar 9 air um, fuel pump and it's re it's been working good so far. Um, suspension is pretty cool. Um, the setup is that you have the soft stock ones on the outside and then you have the really stiff ones on the inside so it doesn't bottom out that much. Like it does bottom out but it's pretty hard to do that. Um, green stinger, nothing really there. Um, what else? Oh yeah, I do have metal dog ones on the back but... I lost, I had the front ones too, but then I, I lost the grub screw in, in like a, somewhere, and I just, I just can't use it anymore, so it's kind of a waste. Yes, they look really nice. So, you can see there's the metal dog bone right there, the shaft. Um, 25T servo horn, full metal, um, aluminum down there. Um, arms and stuff are all stocks, because I, I haven't broken it, so, whatever, I'll just use some metal is kind of stupid, because it just bends, and it's a lot more expensive, so, yeah, I can always 3D print these anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, what else, oh yeah, battery case is being held on by two zip ties, so, um, last, the only reason I have 3D printed a battery case, because it, the lipo wouldn't fit, so I had to kind of zip tie it right here, which is really messy. And also, it uses two screws, and one of the screws is all the way in here, so it's really finicky to get to. Oh, shoot, my receiver is low power already. Alright, I'm going to turn this off so you can just kind of flick it up right there, and it stops. But, um, yeah, the body, this is an extended chassis, so the body... I had the stock, like, original body holes, um, match up to the front ones, but then I had to drill out new holes for the back, kind of messed up, <laughs> don't worry about that, but you can see the original ones are all the way over there, but then I had to drill new ones right there, so I can just kind of flip this up right here, and then access the battery switch, so that's really nice and easy, um, yeah, chrome, chrome, anodized aluminum, pretty nice actually, just, but I kind of hate chrome honestly because it looks kind of, um, it kind of looks weird in my opinion, so I don't, I don't really like chrome, but whatever, it works, it, it's metal, it, it looks nice, whatever, um, yeah, I mean I got this thing for, I picked this up for 170 bucks I think, and, or no, 140 actually, no, I think it was 120 actually, now that I come to think about it. And it wasn't in running condition, so I had to kind of work, like, I had to do tuning on the engine and blah blah blah. I had to replace the whole electrical system. And so far, I think I've spent maybe 300 on this, just restoring it. Buying, and yeah, it's just a really nice car that, that screams loud. Only annoying thing is so temperamental. Like, everything I go somewhere and to drive it something goes wrong or something breaks like i can maybe get five minutes of runtime on it and then just something blows up like i've had spur gears getting chewed up like maybe once every two runs i'm also running all 12 slipper pegs on this so this thing is 12 or one half turnout but it's stock one fourth turnout but then i'm using all six or all 12 so um it's only at one half and then so yeah, I've had spur gears getting melted, or just shoot up, um, all that kind of stuff. Engine coming loose, and the pinion gear losing mesh with the spur gear, and it was just free running. Um, as I said, air filter got sucked in. Carb fell off. <laughs> um, this These screws fell off, and I had to kind of... I lost the other screws, so I kind of had to fashion them with <laughs> these old strip screws that I had. So it looks kind of ugly, but whatever. Um, I've had this entire thing fall off. I've I've had everything happen to this car because it's just so temperamental.
It runs when it wants to, and it does it when it doesn't want to, so, yeah, whatever. But it's, it's a really nice car. It sounds really nice. Big block engine. 3.8 horsepower radius. So, yeah, well, that was my team. I finally got to talk about it after a little while. Um, yeah, guys, uh, I'll include some videos of it running. Um, thanks for watching, Nitro Gang. <laughs> See you later in the next video.